Hey everyone, Serial Tack will back with you again here, minus the beard and the long hair. Yeah, Sasquatch gave me a call. He's going through a midlife crisis and wants some transplants, so I hooked him up. This evening's subject matter is going to be geared kind of towards you club guys and weekend anglers that love to do some summertime night bassing. Guys, I really think you're going to enjoy this. I've got some tips and some baits I'd like to share with you to help kind of sharpen your game when targeting those nighttime bass. Let's get right to it. Some things you really want to keep in mind when it comes to targeting nighttime bass is helping those fish find your bait easier. That includes things like sight, smell and taste, water displacement, and sound. First, let's touch on why sight is so important. You want to offer a darker profile, generally speaking, at night. There's a couple of exceptions. We'll get to that in a minute. But you're wanting that darker profile. Why? That way you're providing kind of a silhouette of your bait between your, where your bass's vision is here and any ambient light coming through the surface of the water. The more profile you give that bass, the better chance he has at locating your particular bait. When it comes to smell and taste, one thing folks generally get wrong when it comes to uh, applying an attractant or a scent is they put on way too much. I'm here to tell you that the slightest little bit of scent is all you need. I'm talking just a dab, a little touch, kind of smear it around a little bit, but the slightest of dabs, that's all you need. Now, how that helps is when fish are locating prey at night, they will use that sense of taste and smell to help locate them. If used correctly, this can be key in helping you find more bass at night. Now the scent can be as something as easy as what a Berkeley power worm gives off. A tried true favorite been around for years and it's very effective. However, if you're needing to apply scent to another bait, try the uh, Bass Dynasty line of scents. They're awesome. They have a thread fin shad slime, a bluegill slime, and a crawfish slime. And any of them I would highly freaking recommend. Next, let's quickly cover water displacement. That's how much water a bait pushes out, how much motion it creates in the water as it moves. Water displacement is also in direct correlation to the size of your bait. So you want to upsize your bait a bit bigger whenever you're fishing at night. That way you push a bit more water and help those bass find your bait a little easier. Some of my favorite baits to get this done are either like a flat, fat like beaver style bait that has a wide base that pushes water as it sails through the water column or a 10 or 12 inch Berkeley power worm with a big long ribbon tail. Love these bad boys. And one of my personal favorites I just can't get enough of, the Kitek Crazy Flapper. They have on the legs of the Crazy Flapper, on the claws, kind of a perpendicular appendage that gets a great kicking motion as it falls through the water fantastic love those freaking baits very underrated crawl bait by kai tech now with that said one thing you want to remember whenever fishing nighttime with big baits is downsize your weight upsize your bait downsize your weight why if you're throwing a texas rig and this bad boy is falling through the water column to get to the bottom you don't want it to just hit like a rock Give that fish more time to find it in the water column while it's there in the strike zone as it's falling. So normally my go-to is a 3 8 ounce weight pretty much any time. Tungsten 3 8 At nighttime, I'll go with a 3 16 to a quarter. It'll still drag and give that paddle tail, like in a crazy flapper, kind of not really a paddle tail, but perpendicular. Or like with a Berkeley ribbon tail, it'll give that a long time to sit there and twist and fall as it goes to the bottom, giving that fish plenty of opportunity to lock on. Another one of my favorites for a, a little bit of water displacement at night, the good old fashioned Zoom Speed Worm. I don't do the Magnum, I do the straight Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. Love that tail. That tail gets so much kick and motion as it falls through the water. One of my favorite baits at night. Normally it's going to be the Kai Tech Crazy Flapper, the Berkeley 10 and 12 inch power worm and the Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. Now let's touch on sound and how sound helps bass find your bait. Now when we're talking sound, it can be something like, you know, the prop on this buzz bait or a propeller like this buzz bait actually has a combination of both. 
or it can be like the propeller on something like a tiny torpedo, an old school classic, also works very well at night. However, I probably wouldn't choose this particular color. I'd probably use a black, blue, purple, or some combination thereof. Even a June bug at night. Love the good dark profiles when going across the top of the water in search of bass during the night. When it comes to soft plastics, I use a lot of rattles in my soft plastics at night. One way, I put them in a little easier because, you know, if anyone's ever tried to put a rattle straight in a worm and get it straight and not kink up your worm, it's a pain in the butt. So, our friends over at Rattlesnaker have come up with a nice little tool to help you get that done. Let me show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few of these like the night before the tournament. That way I'm not having to screw with it out on the boat. Because this little tool is sharp. Plus, it's hard to see at night. You don't want to be turning your headlamp off and on all the time. So having a few prepared will get you down the road pretty good. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the sharp business end. You're going to come in around the egg sack and you're going to feed it in nice and straight to right where you want it to be. Then you're going to take your little rattle. And if you see, there's a hole right there in the business end of the rattlesnaker. We're going to drop this rattle down into there. Now, we're going to take our plunger tool. And then we're just going to insert it. Until it snaps and clicks. And it's in. Now you'll just take, slide it out. Now look at that. Your worm's nice and straight. You've got your rattle embedded inside your worm. Hear that rattle? Works perfect. Another favorite bait of mine when it comes to sound and water displacement and kind of the whole nine yards, except for scent and taste, but we can always add some. The Jackal Pompadour. This bad boy right here is so loud it gets the cops called on it. As you can see, when you cast it out, the wings fold in, making this thing like a bullet through the air. Whenever it hits the water, those wings pop out, and it acts like a walking bait, walking on those two wings there as it comes across the surface. As you can hear, great rattles to it, and the propeller there on the tail of the boot, it has it all. This thing is so freaking loud and causes so much commotion. The hits on it are violent. I mean, you can tell I believe in it. I've got one tied on right now. And as a matter of fact, one of my favorite night colors right here called Black Bone. Thing is sexy. You got that nice silver metallic bone there on the side. The black, a little chartreuse on the top, a little red. If I can see it right there underneath the chin. Freaking bad, bad man. This size is the Pompadour Junior. Don't let the name Junior fool you, okay? It's still 5 eighths of an ounce. The Big Daddy size, the Senior is freaking huge. And the micro is only a quarter of an ounce. So this thing right here, to me, it's the sweet spot. So get you some of these. I promise you, you're not going to be disappointed. And no, I don't have a deal with Jackal. I just love this thing. Now let's briefly cover some of my favorite tactics when fishing at night. First, love me some nighttime fishing docks. And there's two kinds of lights we want to look out for. The big, super bright, old school sodium lights that are on the face of docks or right there near the bank. And what we call pool lights, those nice underwater green glowing lights that attract all the microorganisms, that attract the bait fish, that attract the big mamas. That's what we're looking for when we're not fishing for bass along the shoreline and on docks. Let's say we have a big sodium light or even a pool light where the outer edges of it come right up to the face of the dock. Just like within a couple of feet of the dock posts. A very underrated bait to throw there, or presentation rather, is a drop shot. I know, normally daytime finesse, not the oversized nighttime application you would think. There's a reason why. When you have those lights coming just ending just before where those posts are, bass will sit up on those posts to ambush any of those bait fish that wander out from the light. So, if you surprise them by throwing a drop shot, right on the post, like right where it hits the post and falls straight down. That is a killer way to pick up on some big mamas. Think of it as kind of a reaction strike at night where you're dropping that bait, almost literally hitting them in the nose and boom, they're going to smack it and take it. Trust me, try that and you'll be surprised. 
Now, if I'm going to be pitching up into the dock itself or around the edges, I'm going to go with my Kitek Crazy Flapper and the good old 10-inch Berkeley Power Worm. You can't go wrong Texas rigging those two baits around the lights and up further into that dock. Another thing I like to hit the perimeter of the lights with, just the outsides and then down alongside the docks themselves, a good old-fashioned buzz bait in a good dark color, and that jackal pompadour in that black bone. The, pulling those baits along the sides of the docks and then a, wrapping around the edge of the lights is a great way to get bit. Now, if you find yourself one of those good old underwater pool lights, I'm going to give you a couple of options that might surprise you. Remember back in the beginning of the video when I said light colors weren't very useful, but there were some exceptions at night? This is one of them. Try a white chatterbait. If you drag a white chatterbait from the outside of those lights and even sometimes smack dab to the middle of it, being the fact there's all that ambient light from the underwater light, that white profile gives off more of a natural shad look, and they'll actually hit that at night. White is very rarely effective at night, but that is one of the times it absolutely shines. Now, if you're going to be fishing from the outside of the lights inwards towards the center, here's a couple of things you might not have thought of. First, one of my personal favorites is the Jackal Flick Shake. No, not just another weighted wacky. The true Jackal Flick Shake. Why? Because the ends of the tails are actually molded in different directions. And if you use the approved actual flick shake weighted jig head, it'll give a really squirrely kind of natural crawler presentation as it falls to the water column. You throw that in the center of one of those lights and you're going to get bit. Now another one of my favorites is the Kitek Easy Shiner like this little bad boy here. Now how I'll rig it is a bit different too. Rather than put a jig head on it and swim it through, I'll put a nice little wide gap hook on it, like I want to say this is the uh, three inch, I'll stick like a, maybe a four inch, I'll stick like a number two odd or a three odd wide gap in it, and then I'll split shot it, putting a split shot about 12 to 14 inches above it. Doing this will allow a nice little back and forth kind of swim with a paddle tail very slowly thumping, super light split shot that we can give it a nice little presentation, easing it through the center of that light. Another way you can do it is just drop the split shot, toss it out there on 8 to 10 pound line, let it fall, and then slowly retrieve it through. It's going to resemble a wayward shad that got her out from the rest of school, and he's going to get his butt kicked. Trust me, love it. Of course, if it's a dock at night, it doesn't matter. If it's a pool light or a sodium light, it's still going to get a power worm thrown at it. Other things you can throw at a pool light that you might not think about, how about a giant flutter spoon? Pitch that to the outside, let it fall, yank it up once, and then let it kind of sail through the outside edges to kind of into the first third of the light. You would be shocked how many big mamas that are hanging around that perimeter will come up and smack the piss out of a big flutter spoon. Last but not least is a bait you might not have ever heard of, and it's going to be kind of hard for you to find these days. You might check the hookup tackle. They have them. In other sizes, sometimes they carry the big one. It's the OSP Do Live, some people say Do Live, crawler in nine inches. This bad boy is freaking huge. Now, if you've not seen it in action, go check out OSP's YouTube page, or you can even, I think, find a video maybe on uh, the hookup tackle as well. The tank test on these things are phenomenal. When you hook them, Weightless, by the way, weightless. It's a big, bulky worm. It has kind of an undulation where the front of the worm to the back of the worm does this number as it falls perfectly horizontal through the water. You can snap it up and then let it fall and do its twisting motion again. Fantastic bait, something they're not used to seeing. And again, they'll beat it up pretty good. Now, when it comes to other moving kind of reaction style baits, you can't leave out the good old lipless, right? I still go with dark colors, like this bad boy here. You see the nice dark black with the blue highlights? Gorgeous bait, wonderful sounding, will really produce at night. In addition, I also like to throw the same thing in a square bill. Something like the twin to that lipless, like this bad boy right here. Beautiful black, blue, wonderful, wonderful silhouette bait for that nighttime reaction strike. Now, if you're just heading down the bank, bank beating, 
or fishing open water, try any of these. You can't really go wrong. Whether it be top water with a pompadour or buzz bait, middle of the water column like a cheddar bait. You know, if you're around the lights, use a white. Otherwise, use something dark as well. I like to use a good candy bug or something along those lines. But fish that water column like you would any other time, just with a different profile of baits. A little bit larger, dark, to give you that silhouette. Now let's say you're fishing a ledge or where a flat drops off into a creek. I want to give you something you haven't thought of here too. Take a Tokyo rig, weight it down real good, and then put an oversized worm on the back of it. I'm talking anything from 9 to 12 inches. Now what you want to do is instead of jigging it in one spot like a Tokyo rig is normally done, swim it, drag it. Maintain bottom contact. Don't let that weight on that stem of that Tokyo rig leave the bottom. But reel it, drag it at speed, that's why you want to weight it down real good, and let that stem of that Tokyo rig bump along the contour of the bottom of the lake. Up over brush piles, hitting stumps, rocks. Because any English that thing imparts on the bait behind it, you will be transferred. If it hops up, that worm will hop up, side to side. You know, it'll give it all kinds of little jingles and wiggles. That's what you want. So don't leave it one spot and hop it. Throw it out there on a good heavy Tokyo rig and swim it back good. Let me tell you, you'd be shocked how many fish will pummel that bad boy as well. Even if you're fishing a jig, upsize the trailer. Give it a little bit better profile. You want it to stand out. Man, black, brown, purple. Uh, oh my goodness. Of course, your black blue. I like to go with some June bug and June bug reds. All those colors will do you justice at night. Let's say your lake is super, super pressured. Okay, you can go finesse. What I do in that situation is I take something like a zoom finesse worm and like a June bug or a June bug red, and I'll split shot it on a very, very slow, steady retrieve. Once in a while, just lifting up the rod tip by a couple inches just to impart the slightest of English on it. Does it always have to be a big profile? No. What you do need to do is break out of that mindset of what you would normally throw and think outside the box a little bit. If you want to be really successful during night tournaments and on your weekend night outings, you got to break out of that mold. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know I can get long-winded, especially about topics I'm very passionate about. I'll try to break it up into some timestamps in the description to make it go a little easier. But thank you so much for being here and watching today. Please comment, like, share, subscribe on the way out the door. Get your night baits together. Make sure your ice chest is full of cold water. Get out there to break away from this summer heat and enjoy some night fishing. Most importantly, get out there, keep it wet.